Hello, and this is my first tutorial that I've ever tried to do, so bear with me on this. I am Melissa, and I am studying at the University of Florida to be an art educator right now. This is my final project for art in alternative settings, but um, I hope to be able to have an online program set up for dependent dependent military children in the United States. But I'm going to do this based off of Dover Air Force Base where I went to school for middle school, um, Dover Air Middle, and I graduated from Cesar Rodney High School which is located off of base. This first tutorial is going to teach you about the products used for drawing as well as painting. Um, but the painting one will be the next tutorial after this. Because um, drawing, once you know how to draw, you can pretty much paint. Um, paint is just adding a couple more steps than what you would when you draw. Okay. When you first start out, most people will use graphite, which is just a you know typical um, typical pencil that you would normally use. A number two for you know homework and stuff like that. Um, or you know when you're younger than that, you would use crayons and markers, you know, for elementary school. That's well fine and dandy, but me personally, I think the best idea if you ever want to learn how to draw is to get yourself vine charcoal. Vine charcoal can be used for multiple different things. It's easy. Yes, it does get you dirty and that's why I'm in the outfit I am in right now because you don't want to be wearing something that's good like white or um, an outfit that you would wear to church of course of course not you know um, you don't want to get all dirty now this here it's kind of like well it actually is it's drafting paper which people use for multiple different reasons you can use it for transferring an image to a canvas. You can use it for see-through, like if you're using a design table that has a light underneath of it and you put a picture underneath, you can actually draw straight from that picture, flip this over and, you know, trace the other thing on the back when when you have the picture over here. Because when you do a tracing, it's going to be backwards when you do it on here. Say, for instance, okay, say we have the image underneath of this. I'm just going to put this piece of paper that I did earlier for a tutorial for someone. Um, actually, a live tutorial. Because um, I used to work at Michael's craft store as an oil painting instructor so you can kind of see the image underneath but if this was on a drafting table and you can have a light underneath and the paper wouldn't be hooked to this of course you'd have just two papers you'd have your photograph underneath and your picture on top or well your paper on top that you could trace it so basically if you could see it right here you see the image underneath you can trace it now this just says vertical and that's all I'm going to trace so that you can see what I'm talking about now if I were to take this And just take it off the paper and flip it over 
And then, as you can see, the letters are backwards. So if I were to trace that onto the underlying piece of paper, the image would be backwards. And you don't want that. So, what you would have to do is you would have to put something underneath so it doesn't get on your other piece of paper because it will come off and like I said this is done with blind charcoal so that it can come off fairly easy so all you do is retrace what you traced before Now, it says vertical on both sides. But make sure that when you trace it, that it's the right direction this time. So that means that it needs to be saying vertical, the right direction towards you. So vertical. Now. Take your piece of paper and lie it down on another piece of paper. Now, you would normally want to have, like, if you're doing, you could either put it on a piece of paper or you could put it on your canvas. Say, you know, if you're going to draw it, um, then you would do it on paper. You can use any different type of paper you want, but I, if you really want high quality paper, you probably want to be doing Bristol board for uh, charcoal because it'll hold the, the charcoal a lot easier. Now if you're going to do oil painting, of course, you can do it on all different formats. You could do it on paper or you can do it on canvas. Canvas, you could either buy um, by the bulk and build your own canvases, which I will show. I'm not going to do a tutorial on that because that will take forever to do, believe me. Um, but you can buy pre-made stretch canvases and use gesso on top of them. Um, what you really want to do if you cannot make your own canvas is to purchase a canvas that has bigger stretcher bars or double stretcher bars on it because if you get the real thin stretcher bars those stretcher bars will warp when you put paint on them your it won't last long enough so you know but that's a different tutorial anyway but this is for this is for drawing purposes so basically you have vertical written here so you go back over top of it And you want to just make sure that you go over it a multiple of times so that it comes off on the other piece of paper. And yes, it will come off a lot lighter than what the original looked like, but now it says vertical. So. Basically, what this is doing is so that you can avoid having to do major detail work on a piece of paper if you want to do oil painting. So you can transfer the drawing over to your canvas. So if you, you can use multiple different mixed media to create your work. Um, this is how I work because it's so much easier for me to do. I, um, right now my camera's out of commission, so I have a normal, like usually what I use is a Canon T3i to take photographs, because I like painting from a photograph, um, because then I have a still image um, that I can work with 
for long periods of time because oil painting isn't like an overnight thing. You have to be able to keep working on it until it's finished, until you think it's resolved. Um, oil paint does not dry, it cures. Um, that means it just gets hard. Um, you can always rework it. Um, unlike watercolor or acrylics, which I will get into a little bit later. But this is why I like showing how to do transfer mechanism for drawing. Um, if you don't know how to draw, that's another thing that, that'll help you. I mean, you could use other um, formats uh, for drawing. Like, say, for instance, that's why I was getting into the photograph and the camera. Um, because if you know how to photograph, you can paint. Um, believe me, you can. Um, but you just have to know basics, some basics of drawing in order to do it. So, you can use a projector. They have digital projectors. They have um, slide projectors, which is not very used anymore because a lot of people don't use slides anymore. They're a thing of a past. Um, a lot of people use Photoshop. So if you want to avoid the idea of, you know, photography and you want to draw first, you know how to draw, you can draw on Photoshop and you can print that out. You can either like I said, you can print it out and you can do this format, put the image underneath of your paper and trace it. Or you can look at the image and draw straight from that image onto the piece of paper if you know how to draw. But, so, going from there, basic techniques. I'm going to assume that you don't know how to draw, okay? There's different f forms of vine charcoal. They come in soft, medium, and hard. Hard is used for very fine lines. Medium is used for your gray tones. Um, and gray tones, I mean, like, for shading. Now, if you don't know what shading is, I'm going to show you that in a little bit but just bear with me. Soft is so that you can get down and dirty, put it down and shade it in and it's going to be a lot lighter than your medium tones. But I usually use soft for pretty much everything until I get into my deep darks. Um, the best charcoal for your deep, deep darks is charcoal with a K. You can purchase this at Michael's um, art supply store. I, like I said, I used to work there, but I'm not promoting them. They're expensive. Um, there's other different things, other places you can get them too. Um, it's a little bit, like I said, art, you have to pretty much be willing to put the money out to be able to do the projects you need to do but the basic thing things that you need for drawing is vine charcoal paper and like I said you can use any different type of paper you want um, you can use watercolor paper paper because charcoal will work on anything um, But if you want professional quality, you want to go with Bristol board. Okay, now, shading. For shading, I use these little stumps. Now, to do that, use your soft vine charcoal and to hold the charcoal. A lot of people will try to hold it like a pencil and you don't want to do that because you don't have control over the whole entire charcoal that way. So most people will use it like a pencil which is like this and you don't want to do that. 
So, how do you hold vine charcoal, you ask? With your index finger, put it on top, like that. And, so this means that you can use it like a pencil, if you want to, on the tip. Or, you can use it on the top side. Or, which is my favorite, you can use it like this on its complete side and rub it down. And it gives you something like that, which can be shaded out. You can, your fingers are a great thing too for drawing with because you can shade it like this. Shading just means blending it. And blending, when you think of blending, you think of mixing, you know, like in baking. Um, which is basically true, because you're mixing the charcoal into the paper to create what I call depth. Well, a lot of people call it depth too. But um, depth is basically trying to make a 2D, which is your paper, which is a flat surface, one, two, you know, two dimensions, into what it looks to be three dimensions, which is what your body looks like or a building looks like, because it's got more, like it's going back into space. Um, like something sitting over top of something else. Say for instance, a ball. Okay, is sitting on top of a table. Okay, this is the table. It's just a, you know. Okay, so it's sitting on top of a table. Okay, I know it doesn't look very good, but it's sitting on a table. Okay, so let's just bear with me. So, three dimensional. Now, Picking apart a ball, when it, it doesn't look very three-dimensional right now, does it? That's because it's only line drawing. Now, to make it three-dimensional, you have to look where the lighting is coming from. Okay, so let's say that our source of light is coming up from, well, it's your left-hand side and my right hand side. Um, so this is your light. Now light can either be natural or artificial. Um, and the definition of that, natural, is anything that occurs, you know, on an, in actual real life. Natural environment. Man, it, man did not make it. So artificial is any lighting that is man-made. So an example of man-made lighting would be lamps, um, flashes from cameras, um, light bulbs, and natural. I mean, you could say that flames, you know, could be kind of both, but flames are actually natural I would say so flames would be natural light um, sunlight okay so now that we have groups of light natural and artificial now you know what lighting comes from what okay so how do you know where the lighting hits your object well, it depends on where it's located. So we say it's located on the right-hand side 
or your left hand side and it's coming in and hitting the ball right here okay so that means that this is going to be your highlight right here because that's where the brightest light is okay so now we have a highlight To make it look real okay so your highlight is there so it'll be the brightest area and then after that you have your mid-tones what does mid-tone mean well it's gradation gradation. So what does gradation mean you ask? Well, okay, I will show you. Okay, so you have your highlight and that means that from your highlight you have a tone. Tone. What does that mean? That just means the amount of shade we have. So shade means contrast. Okay, so it's from contrast means from light to dark or chiaroscuro, shading, light to dark. So you have your highlight and then it gets darker as it goes out. So midtones are in the middle range between your light and your dark. So that means it's in between them. So that means you have your shadow. That is your dark. Dark tone, mid tone, and highlight tone. Okay, so that means this is your darkest dark and then it goes to medium and then your light without any shading at all. Okay? So that's what that means. So your highlight, your midtone, and it gets darker as it goes out. And that's what gradation is. Darker as it goes out to the bottom because there's no light over here. Okay. And then the stump. What is the stump used you ask for? Okay. You use it to blend it out into your highlighted area. And this m creates depth, which means making a three-dimensional, making it look three-dimensional on a 2D plane or 2D object, which is your paper. Okay, so now you have somewhat of a ball and it looks like it's starting to get a little bit more three-dimensional. Now, that is all done with soft vine charcoal. So if I were to go like this, it would completely wipe it away. So with the charcoal with the K, you start adding a little bit to the side that is supposed to be your darkest dark. And then you can blend that out into your mid-tones and do not touch your highlight because you don't want that taken out. You want that one completely white. So then you can use the stump and do the same thing that we did with the vine charcoal on a side and blend it out to create depth. And of course, like I said, you will get dirty. 
so it's best to use an outfit or an apron or something that you have so you don't get dirty like that but your hands will get dirty as you can see my hands are extremely dirty so try not to touch your face or another person unless you want to give them a mustache <laughs> alright so that's the basic shading and then like I I don't know if I mentioned it but we have these kneaded erasers that's also a really nifty tool for shading as well or taking out you know because it's an erasing away the stuff on the paper so say for instance you put too much which I did too much charcoal on this side and because charcoal is so much easier than graphite to get out you could just go like this on the side just like you do with vine charcoal with a kneaded eraser which a kneaded eraser is basically it feels like gum and you can mold it just like gum but it, I mean it it kind of feels like gum but not really it's not as sticky and you could just go like this with it between your fingers make a point on it use it on the side play around with it um, and then you want to do the same thing again with your stump and blend that back out into your white area. Okay. Another thing is when you're shading you want to try to avoid lines as much as possible. So if you see a line that means that you need to do more shading on the outside edges of your object or you know just overall in general if that's what you're trying to go for now there's different ways of drawing and you could do linear drawing which is more for graphic design or you know for storybooks or stuff like that um, which makes it look real but and yet fake at the same time it just depends on the quality that you're trying to go for in your drawing but this here we're trying to make it look real three-dimensional now there's the ball now after that you have to realize when something is sitting on top of something else it's going to create a cast shadow because it's blocking the light from hitting that side so it's sitting on a table and the table still looks you know it doesn't look real it just looks like lines like I said before you don't want lines when you're trying to get something to look real and three-dimensional so a cast shadow where does it sit you say well it sits on the opposite side of where your light is coming in so we said your light is over here right there right there and then so this here is your darkest dark area on the ball but it's not the darkest area of your paper your cast shadow is going to be the darkest area on the bottom part so wherever there's a contact point between one object and, and another so you can make it look like it's sitting on top that contact point is going to be the darkest area of your paper so what you want to use is the charcoal with a K again get that put your finger on top again use it on its side and make sure it's the darkest that you can make it and this too is going to fade out from the contact area is going to be the darkest area and then it's going to fade out as it goes further out at the bottom so you want to use the charcoal with a K first and then you want to use the vine charcoal over top of that so it's easier to blend out because like I said the charcoal with a K is harder to take out and you don't want to take out the charcoal with the K by the place where it's sitting so it looks like it's actually sitting on the on the table okay 
and then you want to blend that out. Use your stump again on its side and blend that out. And see, as you could tell, because there's not enough dark on the bottom of that ball, the line of the bottom right here is fading out. And you can't see where one object begins and where the table begins. So that means that I need to put more dark charcoal underneath. Okay, and then you can blend it out once again. Okay, and that's your basics of drawing, well, a ball sitting on a table. I mean the table still looks two-dimensional because I didn't shade it in or anything. I mean if you want I could I could um, shade that out and do a whole bunch of different things with it just the same way as we did the ball. It's just a different type of shading that's all. So you could completely do shading with your stump basically. Say you have a line, you take it and you blend that line out. But, as you can see, I've made a big mess down here, but because, you know, it's very light, I can erase it with my kneaded eraser and pull that out. But you got to be careful, because um, sometimes you can't get that off, um, just depending upon what kind of charcoal you're using and how hard you push. Because, um, like I said, my hands are very dirty. So sometimes you might have to go and wash your hands a few times just to be on the safe side that you don't get it on the rest of your drawing. So there you have it. A basic idea of drawing a ball on a table. And that's the basics. <laughs>